Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your data science projects, resumes, and potentially portfolios. I'm pretty excited today. This is the first sports-related project that I'm going to review, so I hope you guys also enjoy this as well. Now, special thanks to Daniel for submitting his project here. Daniel is from Germany, and he just started coding two to three months ago. So I think that this is really awesome and, and could be fairly aspirational for those of you who are just starting programming. I looked through it a little bit already, and it seems like he's learned a lot and been able to implement quite a bit in just a short period of time since starting. So without further ado, let's jump into this. If you'd like me to review your projects, portfolios, or resumes, please let me know in the comments below. And also shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. All right, let's hop right into it here. So let's start with his a GitHub profile. So he's obviously pretty new to this. I always recommend a picture here and maybe a short about you statement. If you're in school, where you go to school, the types of content people can expect to see here. I also always recommend quite a bit of projects. So I usually say at least four projects where you can cover regression, clus clustering, classification, and then some more advanced concepts like deep learning, computer vision, or NLP. So. Let's just jump right into the project and look at the README here. So he, he's obviously watched some of my other videos about how to set up a README. This is really good to start. There's a project overview, code and resources, and he breaks down each of these different segments here. So one thing I do notice is there's some, you know, like capitalization issues. So you want to make sure and go through and just edit the grammar for these, especially if you have recruiters or anyone going through and looking at them. Generally, I think that the overview here is really good. He wants to understand basically if the fourth quarter is categorically different than the first three. So, you know, he also wants to see if, you know, the pace in the fourth quarter is slower um, and hopefully not related to if it's like a blowout game or something like that. So he does all of these steps. Um, where he collects his own data, it looks like he cleans it, he does an EDA, and then he does, um, it looks like a t-test and k-means clustering. So I really like the, the elements here. I will say, you know, I didn't do this in my uh, data science project from scratch series, uh, which I definitely would check, up, uh, check out if you're interested in how to build a kind of end-to-end -end data science project. Uh, but you can link to each of these sections if they're not in order up here. So in the web scraping, you have a link to the web scraping code. For someone who wants to look at a specific section of that, that could make it easier for them. All right, now let's jump into the actual web scraping. This looks pretty good. He uses Selenium, it looks like, which is a, a fine choice for web scraping, although it can be a little bit slower than using Beautiful Soup or something. So I would be very interested to know why he chose this approach over the Beautiful Soup approach. Um, but again, this is perfectly fine. I like the kind of summary at the top as well as all the comments in the code. Those look really good to me. Next, let's look at the actual data cleaning. It seems like he went through and he created a data frame for the first three quarters and then a data frame probably for the last quarter. Um, and he drops the season columns. So this all looks fine. Um, he makes a home and away team, and then he removes season. So very good there. Next, let's actually look at this exploratory data analysis. It seems, you know, just from scrolling through it, you know, we're looking at, at quite a bit of code, you know, 6,000 lines, so very thorough. Um, generally, with the EDA, this is fine, just having a bit about, um, you know, what you want to explore. I will say like deleting outliers, adding some stats, you could lump that into the data cleaning phase. That could be something that might actually help you condense this since it already is a lot of code. Um, and you know, maybe having, I'm not sure if he has sections for each of these, but if you're using a, a notebook like this, it could be practical to break it into sections for each of these bullets here. So let's, I'm not gonna spend too much time on too many of the individual elements, unless I see something interesting. 
uh, but we're just going to go through and, and see if there's anything that really sticks out to me. So I like how he explores the data. There doesn't appear to be anywhere where he does like a, a describe of the data, looking at kind of some of the central tendency of each of these, looking at the mins and maxes. That could be, I know he removes outliers, but that could be a good way for him to see where those might be at kind of the front end of this analysis here. Looks like he creates some advanced stats here. I like how he pulled this out and he shows us how that, that is calculated. That is really good. You know, this is something I was actually fooling around with offensive and defensive rating a little bit recently for work. So it's cool that he's able to calculate this and it looks like the calculation is correct. So, you know, our outliers doesn't want to include games with a big margin of victory. Really good. That's something you should definitely pay attention to. Um, so it looks like he removes some of those. Looks at you know plus minus versus margin, which I think are good things to compare. And this is a pretty nice, pretty nice visual here. So he looks at the number of games that fall into each of those categories. I would probably like just a little bit more explanation about what this graph means to him. I think that giving context to a lot of your graphs rather than just showing them um, can help anyone viewing this. So if I looked at this on, you know, without any context, I probably wouldn't understand what I should be taking out of this type of uh, visual. Um, you know, going forward, we're comparing stats. Okay, so here he does the R describe. I would consider doing that a little bit earlier in the analysis. And then he compares, it looks like, the first three quarters to the last quarter uh, across all these different stats. I think these visuals are fine, but you might just want to include a legend rather than having someone have to go through and look at, um, you know, how you set up the, the, the graph here to, to take something away from this. Um, only differences are here. I think that it's fine to include that and then we go through some more of these related to shooting statistics. So, I'm trying to figure out. So this is pace now. Uh, again, I think that these are all really incredible visuals. I like this one a lot. I'd probably put that up top. But we want to describe just a bit more about them and what you know the takeaways are associated with that. So I assume the orange is the first three pace and the blue is the fourth quarter pace. So this is generally what we would expect the game slows down. Um, again, I like these visuals, weekly average, pace, very cool stuff. So, I mean, it looks like the pace is, uh, I don't know if it's significantly different yet, but it, it looks like it definitely differs from quarter to quarter. Um, I will say all this looks really interesting for the individual teams. If he was looking to get a job, for example, if he specified this analysis to an individual team, that would be a really good way to get a foot in the door to say, okay, you know, I'm the Celtics, how do I um, perform in the fourth quarter relative to other teams? If, again, your goal is to get a job, doing projects that are specifically relevant to certain companies can go a really, really long way. You know, I was talking with another YouTuber, I think it was Data Science J, I, I watched one of his videos, and he actually got a job opportunity because he had used one company's data, they saw it, and, um, you know, that was enough for the, to move the needle to at least get them to interview him. So definitely, uh, I'll, I'll link that video as well. I think that that's, that's a, a pretty neat one. Going through here, again, uh, four different quadrants. So teams ahead after the third. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I, I would, for the EDA, like to see a little summary at the end. Like here are the four or five biggest findings and maybe just a little bit of text about about that there to just get a bit more understanding about what he sees from the data rather than what I'm inferring from the data. So the EDA again is like a, a good storytelling component. So he should be trying to, to like 
explain how the EDA leads into the next step of the actual, I believe he's doing a clustering analysis and a t-test. So, you know, another thing, you know, if he is doing some clustering, if he's clustering by teams, that's something he can bring to the table to talk with an actual individual team as well. So let's look into this t-test and it, it seems like he just looks to see if the t um, you know, if the stats from the third quarter to the far fourth quarter, quarter are different and if there's a significant value there. So it looks like most of them, except for the, the ratings of you know defensive and offensive ratings are significant and so I, I would be a little bit careful with significance as a data scientist so for most data science roles your goal is to have a meaningful impact on the company and that's related to expected value not necessarily statistical significance so I could have a solution that I am 60% sure in but if it creates you know more business value taking into consideration that it might only be true um, it might not always hold true as a theorem that might be okay especially if there's limited downsides so data science is very much about experimentation more so than statistical significance in general i think statistical significance is a good benchmark but we should always be thinking about testing these things in the real world to see if we can get some benefit out of it there so I think that this is cool. Again, I would like to see a little bit more of, uh, of a write-up um, about what this might mean for a team, what type of value this might drive for an organization. Again, we should be thinking about these projects as, um, as products and what are we trying to sell kind of at the end? What, what are our findings? How can this create value? How can this help someone? So again, the analysis, really strong, um, especially for someone who started so recently but we also have to think about the, the storytelling aspect and you know who the consumer is of this. So the K-means clustering, it looks like he went on to look at that based on the things that didn't have statistical significance quarter to quarter to try and group these teams. So it looks like he uses the elbow method. Uh, I like the elbow method a lot. There are a couple different ways to evaluate uh, clustering as well. I think that there's the silhouette method and there's one other, but I would explore some of the other approaches to evaluating the number of clusters there. I also think with clustering, there is some uh, intuitive subject area expertise that is relevant. So you should be thinking about, okay, do these clusters make sense on an intuitive and um, you know, uh, another level where it's based on what you know about the, the game of basketball, for example. So. I think that it looks like, you know, there isn't such a clear um, turning point here, but he maybe used some subject area knowledge to get the four clusters. Uh, teams with bad defense in the fourth quarter, teams with bad defense and or bad offense. Um, the elite group or the first and third, first three in the fourth quarter improved their defense and their offense. And then good teams in the third quarter, but declined in the fourth quarter. So. Um, you know, I'm kind of surprised to see like Golden State not in this one. You know, for example, I, I don't remember what year this is in, but when Golden State was dominating the game, um, you know, they were really, really strong in the third quarter specifically. So, you know, this would be really cool to see also over time. So thinking about, you know, have teams change it, changed over time related to this and you know what players can actually influence that. So I think this is the end of the analysis. One thing I, I would like to see at the end here is maybe some next steps, uh, some hypotheticals. If I were to continue this analysis, these are the things I'd like to look at. Again, employers want to understand kind of a, a story about where this analysis is going and if you were to continue on, what you'd like to look at. A lot of businesses, you know, they have to hear what your thoughts are with a, an original analysis to figure out if there's value investing in continuation of that analysis. So that element of business understanding, that element of, um, you know, thinking about the future can pay dividends in your job search or when you're communicating with you know, whoever it is, the hiring manager or the data science manager. 
So, you know, I, I really think Daniel did a good job, especially his limited exposure, uh, with his limited exposure to programming here. I think that hopefully this should show you that you can come a really long way in a couple months with programming, with data science, with any of these things. And he has a really solid foundation to build on. I would recommend him to continue this with other projects. Um, you know, this was a great start and I'd love to see what he comes up with next. So as usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.